Whoever has the Son has life. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Amen. There is a song by Tim McGraw that was released in 2004, and Tim McGraw is a country western singer. A song released by him in 2004 that is called Live Like You Were Dying. If you can't tell by the title, this song talks about living without regret. Live as though each day is your last day. Living as though it is a wonderful time in your life and each day is the most important day. Regret. We all have them, don't we? I think I could count on one hand the amount of people I've met in my life who didn't have a regret. What regrets do you have? When you think about your life, when you look back, many people have different regrets, don't they? Some people regret the fact that Maybe they didn't spend as much time as they meant to with their family. Some people regret that they didn't go to that exotic location on vacation that they always planned to go, that they always planned to go to when they retired. Some people regret that they don't have as much time as they'd like to talk to their friends or their family to tell them that they love them. What are your regrets? I know I have lots of regrets in my life looking back and thinking to myself, boy, if I only would have done it this way, or if I would have only done it that way. Many of us, as we look back, we know that we sometimes think that way ourselves. We think, if I wouldn't have said that, if I wouldn't have done that, or if I would have said or done that. No, but sometimes regret is not just about things in this life, but things in our spiritual life as well, isn't it? Some of us each day take time and we find that we regret our sinfulness. In other words, we may say, We repent of our sinfulness. We look back on our lives and we have contrite hearts or or broken hearts for what we have done or not done for the Lord. Do you regret those sins? When you think about your life in that way, is there regret? Well, God says this is not a bad thing. In fact, this is a good thing. In fact, if you look back to 1 John chapter 1, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have that promise that as often as we repent, as often as we confess our sins, as often as we come before God, realizing that we are poor, miserable sinners, we may again come to Him. He will hear our prayers and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Regretting our sins is not a bad thing. But dwelling in that regret, that's when things maybe get a little bit, well, not so good. Because when you start to dwell on any bad thing in your life, what happens? Not only does it start to tear you down emotionally, but when you focus on that regret, you cannot see what is ahead of you. When you're constantly looking down and constantly focusing on what you have done wrong, that sin that keeps tripping you up that you just can't get past, then you can't see that God has a plan, and that God has, a, has already forgiven you those sins and laid out that path for you. There are those sins in our lives. Every person has them. Those sins that we cannot seem to get past. There are those sins that on a daily basis we commit, or at least on a weekly basis, those sins that we realize that is, as often as we try, we cannot overcome them. And we cannot help but focus on those sins. And we cannot help but realize that those sins seem to encumber us. That those sins seem to make it hard to truly live as people alive in Christ. See, that's when we start to dwell on those things. We miss out on the fact that God does have a direction for each one of us. That He has a plan for you. You are not on this earth for no good reason. And when you think about it, there are people out there who live their lives each day just waiting to die. They live their lives each day just hoping that tomorrow will be their last. That's no way to live, is it? That's no way to lead a life in Christ. We are people who have been forgiven. We should have joy. We should be alive in our faith. We should be living our faith. But sometimes it's easier just to exist. To live with our faith. Instead of living in our faith, overcome by our faith. It's easier just to exist, to go on, to to keep on worrying about those things and just keep on focusing on those things on this day-to-day basis instead of seeing 
that God has already taken care of everything for you. God has already paid the whole price for you. When you start to look at things from that perspective, you realize that even the sin that continues to trip you up is not a sin that can hold you back. It is not a sin that can hold you back from living out your faith in God. When we live our lives as children of God, instead of focusing on ourselves, it means living out and doing those things that God loves. Notice our, in, our, in 1 John 5, our epistle for today, this is love for God to obey His commands. God doesn't say wallow on your sins. God doesn't say constantly be, spend time worrying about those sins. But live out your faith. Live out those commands. And when we live out our faiths, when we live out God's commands, it's going to show up in our lives. We don't live out our faith to do something for ourselves, but we live out our faiths to honor God. When we help someone walk across the street because they need help, we do it to honor God. When we offer someone a word of support, we do it to honor God. When we obey the laws of this government, we do it to honor God. We share our love with one another going to church, reading the Scriptures, giving our offerings, lifting up prayer. We do it to honor God. Our lives are not our lives alone that are just meant to be stagnant. Our lives are not meant to just be sitting, to be doing nothing. But our lives are meant to be alive, to be living. When you look at someone and you say, that person, they are alive. What do you see? What do you see when you see someone who's alive? Do you see someone who is constantly moping? Someone who's constantly sitting around? Someone who's constantly worrying? No. When we talk about someone who's alive, we see someone who's vibrant. Someone whose life is exploding beyond them. And that is not centered in them. (laughs) In our world today, it's easy to say that it is, isn't it? To say that it's all about their inner chi or something like that. But when we talk about our inner strength, our inner support, it comes from one alone. And that is the Holy Spirit who continues to live with us. Jesus said that when He was going, when He was ascending, as we will celebrate next week, that He was not going to leave us alone. That He was not going to leave us on this earth to worry and, and, and be up by, like orphans, He said. But to go forth with the Holy Spirit. To go forth with the Holy Spirit living in each one of us. We are made to live for our Lord. We are made to be alive for our Savior. The question is, though, how many of us will live for our Lord? How many of us will take a step out in faith for our Savior? How many of us are willing to do that? No, it's easier, it is easier to coexist with the world. It's easier to be the one that fits in with everyone else, isn't it? Maybe you could call this camouflaged Christians. Christians who, when they're in church, they are alive in their faith. When they're in Bible study, they cannot help but celebrate the Word. When they're in prayer with their fellow believers, they cannot help but pray. But when they're in the world, everything's turned off. It's like a light switch. At one point they're on, at one point they're off. We are people who have a message that was not camouflaged. We are a people who have a message that was not meant to just be kept inside of us, bound up inside our hearts. We are a people who are meant to live out our faith each and every day. When Christ came, He didn't worry about rocking boats. He didn't worry about who liked Him. He didn't worry about the fact that His message was not in line with everyone else. When He came, He came with a message that literally shattered the earth. When Christ came, He came with the message that changed hearts and changed lives. There were people who were living then as there are now who did not know hope, who did not know the assurance of salvation. There were people who lived each day who looked around and said, this is all there is. They went around each day thinking, maybe this is my last day. They weren't truly living. They were living to die. We are people who are made alive to live and be alive. We are people with the earth-shattering news that our God loved us so much that He destroyed death. Our God loved us so much that He rose. Our God loved us so much that He gave us 
new life each day and new life to the fullness. And that life came when we were baptized in the waters of holy baptism. When we entered into those waters, water, blood, and spirit, we, we, came, we came before the Lord, washed, cleansed, and made new. In those waters of holy baptism, our Lord said, you are mine, and I will give you life to the fullness. So how will you live? How will you live with that promise that you have life to the fullness? It's a good question, isn't it? Because on the one hand, we could worry about our sins, the one that keeps tripping us up. On the one hand, we could worry about the fact that, well, maybe we don't have the abilities someone else does. We don't have the energy someone else does. But on the other hand, on the other hand, we could say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know that as you have given me life, as you have redeemed me on the cross, as you have given me new life through the water of holy baptism, I know that you still have a plan and a purpose for me this day. I know that as you invited me to be part of your family, that you have an intention, an intentional role for me as part of the salvation story. Did you realize that? The Lord has an intentional role for you as part of His salvation story. If you are caught up in those questions of ability, those questions of age, if you're caught up in those questions of worth, of sinfulness, come before the Lord. Come before the Lord and lift up those, those concerns in prayer. Lift up those, prayer, those concerns and place them before Him. He will renew you. He will give you the strength and He will give you the assurance. But most importantly, He will give you His Holy Spirit. And that is not one small thing. When the Lord gives you His Holy Spirit, that is not something that is just a passing thing. It is not just meant to be a strength or support in the difficult times. It is, isn't it? But it's more than that. The Holy Spirit living within us. It is the, it is the ignition in our lives to spark us to live for God. Not just to be here. Not just to coexist with the world, but truly live in this world. To live without regret. To live without fear. To live a life that brings honor to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We live in a world that is dying. We live in a world that has been broken by sin. We live in a world that has been destroyed by death. And we live in a world that needs our hope, that needs that message of hope from the cross, that needs that more, the, the Holy Spirit to live in them. We live in a world that our God thought so much of that He would send His own Son to redeem. That is the value that God had in each person. And that is the hope that we have. That is the promise that we have. That when we love the Lord, we will not be able to help but show it. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that you have given us new life through holy baptism. We give thanks to you that you have given us new lives each and every day. That even as we are sinners, even as we have failed to keep your law, that we are redeemed. Lord, help us to go forth. Not as people who are quietly coexisting with the world. Not as people who are scared of of who we might offend or hurt or irritate. But Lord, let us go forth as people who are redeemed, who have Your Spirit with us. Let us go forth as those people who are ignited not by something of this world, but ignited by Your love and by Your forgiveness. Lord, give us the strength to turn to You and know the true hope and the celebration that we will have one day as You give us life to the fullness when we join You in life eternal. This we pray in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.